خلافت کے امی ہم ہیں امانت ہم سنبھالیں گے خلافت کے امی ہم ہیں امانت ہم سنبھالیں گے خلافت کے امی ہم ہیں امانت ہم سنبھالیں گے جزاک اللہ now we have a speech in english the blessings of khilafat and i request hamza ali sahib to come and address us please jazakallah amir sahib respected guests and of course our dear amir sahib and my companions of the table Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahdihi la sharika la. Wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Amma ba'du fa a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmani Rahim Malik Yomiddin Iyaka Nabudwa Iyaka Nastain Ihdina Sirat Al-Mustakeen Sirat Al-Lazina An-Amta Alayhim Gaib Al-Maktubi Alayhim Wal-Atolim قُلْ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ تِهِبًا اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِيُونِ يُقِبَكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَكْفِرَ لَكُمْ ذُنُبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمٌ قُلْ لَا تِيَلَّهَ وَرَسُولٌ فَإِنْ تُوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُهِبُ الْكَافِرِينَ In the verses that I have just recited, Allah says, in Surah Al-Ali Amran, chapter 3, verse 32. Say, if you love Allah, then follow me. Then will Allah love you and remove from you your weaknesses. Verily, Allah is most forgiving, merciful. I was thinking um, a few weeks ago, two weeks ago to be exact, whilst I was on my trip to Egypt. While I was there, I had an opportunity while sitting in a shop where they were making fezes, Turkish caps. I was thinking because just then I had had a conversation with two men who were sitting in this shop, two of the sheikhs from the honored Al-Azhar Mosque in Cairo. And uh, we were talking about the verses of the Holy Quran that illustrate the scientific phenomena. And I had mentioned to them, because for those of you who know me, I'm quite fond of astronomy and photographing uh, different targets in space. And uh, I showed him a few of the pictures that I had taken of the Pleiades and 
uh, particular galaxy, the Andromeda Galaxy, which was discovered uh, in recorded history by uh, a Muslim born in 964, Abdurrahman Asufi. I found this on the web. You too can look this up. But in any event, uh, when they saw the, the pictures, they were absolutely astonished. And the two sheikhs said to me, it's regrettable that no one in the world of Islam is doing these types of things now. We can't find anyone who will take up the banner and push the banner of Islam into the scientific achievements. Everyone is absolutely awash in chasing material gains. And in my heart, I felt such sadness. And I thought later on to myself, the people deprive themselves because the reality is that here in the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, we have countless souls who are pushing and carrying the banner of Islam in every field. And this had me thinking because when I first started out to take these pictures, as is my habit, I wrote to Hazor in the book that I wish to read to you today is called Malfuzat, the Sayings of the Promised Messiah Islam. And when I picked up this book, I realized that one of the letters that I had written to Hazor when I first started my trip in astrophotography, I wrote this letter to Hazor and requested Hazor's prayers. And Hazor wrote me back with a letter that to this day, just it fills my heart with such joy, such happiness. And it's so sad that the rest of the Muslim world deprives themselves of this bounty. It's the saddest thing. And Hazur's behavior, his love, his tenderness for us is the same tenderness, love, and concern that the prophets showed for humanity, which is in reality a reflection of the love, concern that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows for us. But just so that you have an illustration, there is a passage in the first volume of Malfuzat where the promised Messiah says, the fact of the matter is that my friends are a part of me as are my limbs. We observe in our daily lives that even the smallest of parts, such as a finger, for example, if subject to pain, agitates and distresses the whole body. Allah the Exalted is well aware that in exactly the same way Constantly, at every moment, I forever remain anxious and concerned about whether my friends are in a state of ease and comfort. The sympathy and compassion which I feel is not the result of any artificial effort or unnaturally. In fact, just as a mother is incessantly absorbed in, a, in ensuring that each and every one of her children are in peace and comfort, no matter their number, I find my heart replete in the way of Allah with the same tenderness and compassion for my friends. This sympathy is so burning that when I receive a letter from any one of my friends alluding to a grief or illness with which they are suffering, my disposition becomes restless and disturbed, and I am taken aback by grief. As our dear ones increase, this grief increases in equal proportion. There is no hour in which I am free from some form of apprehension and grief because from among the vast number of my friends, one or the other is afflicted by some form of grief or pain. When they inform me of their worries, my heart becomes perturbed and restless. I cannot describe the moment of time that I, that I suffer from worries since there is no being other than Allah the Almighty who can deliver one from such worries and concerns I engage myself constantly in prayers. The foremost prayer that I offer is for my friends to be saved from grief and worry because the thought of them overwhelms me with anguish and agony. Then I pray in the general sense that if there is anyone who suffers from some form of grief and hardship, may Allah the Almighty 
grant them deliverance. My entire effort and my every ounce of my passion moves me to supplicate before Allah the Exalted. Much hope can be gained from the acceptance of prayer. This is the beauty that each and every one of us, this is the beauty that each and every member of mankind has waiting for them as one of, just one of the blessings of Khilafit. By way of personal example, I can tell you that many of us who have gone through the visa application process, and I imagine it's not as easy in every country. And I recall that I had gone through the entire process and I sent off the application and they came back to the reply that my visa had been denied and my family was waiting here for me in the UK. And this agitated me and so I wrote back and forth with them, giving them additional proofs and explanations until finally they said to me, Mr. Elias, there are only two options for you. You can either start a new fresh application and submit additional information if you wish it to be considered, or you can go through the appeals process, which can take anywhere between six to 12 months. I said, Is there, are these my only options? They said, please kindly stop corresponding with us. These are your only options. So I said, fine. But then I thought to myself, well, there, there is a third option. So I wrote a letter to Hazur explaining the situation and I gave it to a friend of mine whom I was staying with and I said, do me a favor, when you go to work tomorrow, can you print this out and mail it for me? He says, yep, yeah, sure, no problem, this is Wednesday night. So Thursday evening he comes back from work, I said, did you, did you mail the letter? He said, astaghfirullah, tomorrow inshallah, I will mail it for you then, that tomorrow was going to be Friday. So I said, all right, please don't forget, don't forget, don't forget. So that Friday morning, I woke up. He had just left for work. And as is the habit of many of us, I picked up my phone, checked my email. There in the email was a letter to me saying, dear Mr. Ilyas, I have forwarded your information to my senior officer who has reviewed the information and fortunately for you has overturned my decision. Kindly send us a copy of your passport and we will expedite the process for you. You see the beauty here is the letter was never sent. So the question is what precipitated this? What made this man sit in his office after saying to me, there's nothing else to be done, please go through the normal process. These are the only two chances you have. What made him decide to pick up all of that information and escalate it to his senior officer on his own? None but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Plan Z. You see, this is the blessing of Khilafit because the one to whom we write after establishing a relationship of love, Allah also has a relationship, a greater relationship of love with Hazur and the institution of Khilafit. And it was Allah who accepted the prayer, the inherent prayer in that letter before it even reached Hazur's office. Which one of you doesn't want a relationship like that. Commenting on this relationship, the promised Messiah, alayhi salatu salam, points out to us that this in fact is the most important part, the relationship with God, and this is the purpose with which every prophet is sent. This is the purpose with which you have been invited to give this up, to turn away, would be to place yourself in the position of that Sheikh in Al-Azhar, lamenting the condition of the Muslims today. They have all of these blessings, 
or as the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned, there are all these treasures that Imam Mahdi al-Masih would come to deliver and yet no one would take them. In closing, I wish to recite to you one of the speeches of the Promised Messiah والسلام, that I find most relevant today. He says, Allah the Exalted states in the Holy Quran, and I will place those who follow thee above those who disbelieve until the day of resurrection. This reassuring promise, the Promised Messiah والسلام, says, was given to the son of Mary who was born in Nazareth. But I give you the good news that the son of Mary who has appeared in the name of Jesus the Messiah has been addressed by Allah the Almighty and given glad tidings in the very same words. Now reflect for yourself. Can those who desire to maintain a relationship with me and wish to be a part of this grand promise and glad tidings be such people who are steeped in the states that incites one to evil and who tread the path of sin and impiety? Nay, of course not. Those who truly value this promise of Allah and do not consider my words to be mere tales and fables ought to remember this and listen with their hearts. I address the people once again and proclaim that they or concern, but this is not the case. This matter escalates to our noble prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and ultimately reaches the holy being of God almighty. In this case, bear well in mind and take heed that if you desire to partake of this glad tiding and hope to be a part of this prophecy's fulfillment and if you possess a true thirst for this grand victory that is to prevail over the disbelievers until the day of resurrection, then my entire message for you shall not secure this success until you advance from the state where the soul reproaches one's inner self for having committed evil to the towering state where the soul is at rest and naturally inclines to goodness. Apart from this, I have nothing more to say. You are bound to a man who is commissioned by Allah to his words with the ear of your heart and remain fully disposed to act accordingly lest you should become of those who fall into the filth of denial after having accepted the truth and thus become the recipients of divine wrath. May Allah bless us, strengthen Khilafat Ahmadiyyat, make us recipients of the blessings of Khilafat, purify us, forgive us our weaknesses, and enjoin us into his mercy. Amen. After a short illness, a few years prior to his death, he had published a booklet by the name of The Will, in which he offered his community the consolation that after his departure, God would help them with the second manifestation of his power. As it had happened at the death of the Holy Prophet وسلم, when God had raised Hazrat Abu Bakr as his second manifestation to rally the Muslims. Thus, Hazrat Hakim Mulvi Nuruddin Anhu was raised as the second manifestation after the promised Messiah salam, and was elected the first Khalifa of the movement under divine guidance. <laughs> divine grace enabled him to perform in his capacity as Khalifa al Masih so well that by the time of his death in 1914, the movement had been fully safeguarded against disruption and disintegration. One of the milestones of his Khilafat was the establishment of the first Ahmadiyya Muslim mission in 1914, and the first missionary sent to England was Chaudhry Fateh Muhammad Siyal. Hazrat Khalifat al-Masih I passed away on Friday the 13th of March 1914. Over 2,000 Ahmadis converged where, in accordance with his will, he stated that his successor should be a righteous and devoted man. Hazrat Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmud Ahmed anhu, was elected as the Khalifa. He was the promised reformer whose advent was prophesied by the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and the promised Messiah on whom be peace and who became the second Khalifa 
at the young age of 25 and nourished the community to its maturity for more than 50 years with his spiritual guidance, prayers, tears, toil and blood. His life fulfilled every aspect of the grand prophecy of the promised Messiah set out in an announcement in 1886. In order to stimulate the moral and spiritual qualities of the community and carry its message far and wide, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih II established the Tahrik e Jadid scheme in 1934. Everything in the movement was charged with new life and new spirit under the impact of this scheme. The most striking activity of this scheme was the network of foreign missions that progressively spread into many countries. And due to the blessings of this scheme, there are now flourishing branches of the movement in more than 200 countries. He called the youth of the Jamaat to dedicate themselves for religious training in the community's missionary training college, Jamia Ahmadiyya. He called on parents to dedicate their children for the service of Islam. He prepared such godly scholars that demonstrated the Qur'an to be a life-giving message and carried its message to the corners of the earth. It is a direct result of these sacrifices and attention that services are being rendered to the Holy Qur'an in every corner of the world. On the 8th of November, 1965, the movement was shook to its foundations by the demise of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih II. May Allah be pleased with him. Every member of the community was overwhelmed with grief. On the 8th of November 1965, after the sad demise of his father, Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmed was elected the third Khalifa in Rabwa. In many ways, this prodigious child was the fulfillment of the Holy Prophet Wasallam's prophecy regarding the promised Messiah salam, that he would marry and have offspring. 1970 marked the year when Hazur toured West Africa. Whilst there, he felt a dire need to help the poor people around him. He devised the Nusrat Jahan scheme to tackle the problems in Africa by building hospitals and schools for the locals. By the grace of Allah, the impact of this scheme was instant, and by the end of the Third Caliphate, over 20 hospitals and more than 120 schools had been built. The eyes of the Christian world were gazed upon Ahmadiyyat in 1978, when Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmed delivered his speech about the breaking of the cross in London. Despite threats from different churches, Hazur was not to be averted from presenting to the world Islam's beautiful teachings. Every moment of Hazur's life was in accordance with the motto he chose for the Jamaat, love for all, hatred for none. On the 9th of June, 1982, at the age of 73, this flag bearer of peace, Hazrat Mirza Nasir Ahmed, passed away and met with his creator. Nearly 100,000 members gathered at the headquarters in Rabwa. In accordance with the constitution of the community's electoral college, a meeting of the college was convened in the Mubarak Mosque in Rabwa to elect the new Khalifa. Under divine guidance, the electoral college elected Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed as the new Khalifa. On the 26th of April, 1984, Ordinance 20 was introduced under martial law by General Ziaul Haq. The ordinance was designed to prohibit Ahmadis from practicing their faith. Hazur immediately called a meeting and it was unanimously decided that Hazur should leave the country immediately. Consequently, Hazur left Pakistan and arrived in London, Heathrow. Hazur then established London as the new headquarters of the community. Within three years, realizing that the Jamaat will expand in a much bigger scope, in 1987, he started the Waqfinor scheme and informed parents from all over the world that they should offer their children, even before their birth, 
and then train them accordingly so that they become fruitful servants for the Jamaat. On the 7th of January, 1994, MTA International was launched and daily transmission started. Hazrat Khalifatul Masih IV maintained a deep interest in the administration and the overall supervision of MTA. Under his guidance, the channel progressed rapidly, starting its 24-hour service across the globe on the 1st of April 1996. He personally initiated new programs and participated in countless programs, ranging from lectures, sermons and question and answer sessions to teaching the Holy Quran and homeopathy, catering for people of all ages and for a variety of languages. He ensured that MTA sought to provide an education and training medium unrivaled in history. His charismatic personality graced the screens of millions. The hurdles had now collapsed and his message could now reach the community no matter where they were in the world. Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, Khalifatul Masih IV, passed away at his residence in London on the 19th of April 2003. On the 22nd of April 2003, Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed's election as Khalifatul Masih V was announced. Ashadu. Ashadu. Allah ilaha. Allah. Since being elected in April 2003, through the divine will as Khalifatul Masih V, Hazrat Mirza Masur Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, has travelled extensively to various parts of the world. He has delivered the same message everywhere, calling the people of the world towards peace, justice, tolerance and compassion. His words and guidance stand apart from the words spoken by all other world leaders, as he is not driven by any political or vested interests. He is driven only by a desire to spread the true and peaceful teachings of Islam throughout the world. With the blessings of Allah the Almighty, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah be his helper, will continue to show the world the true meaning of Islam Ahmadiyya, a message of peace, and lead the Ahmadiyya Muslim community for many years to come. Now um, we are very blessed to have our next speaker with us, Muridin Shama Sahib, who will be addressing us in Urdu on uh, Khalifa Khuda Banata Hai. So Khalifa is appointed by God. I would request him to come and address us. Kunabi <laughs> چند باتیں عرض کروں جس سے یہ پتہ چلتا ہے کہ واقعی خلیفہ خدا بناتا ہے 
یہ دو آیات جو میں نے ابھی آپ کے سامنے تلاوت کی ہیں یہ سورہ نور کی چھپن اور ستاون آیت ہے اس کا انگریزی ترجمہ آپ نے ابتدا میں سنا تھا اس کا اردو ترجمہ یوں ہے اللہ تعالیٰ فرماتا ہے دیس ورسز ان دیس ورسز اللہ دل مارٹی سٹیٹس اللہ ہز پرامیس ٹو دوز امانگ یو ہو بلیو ان دو گڈ ورکس دیٹ ہی ویل شولی میک دیم سکسیسز ان دی ارث As he has made successes from among those who were before you. And that he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them. And that he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their fear. They will worship me and they will not associate anything with me. Then those who are who Whoso is ungrateful after that, they will be rebellious. And observe prayer and give the zakat and obey the messenger that you may be shown mercy. About khalifa or the term khalifa, it is important to know that this word, this is an Arabic expression which means vice-gerent or successor or vice-gerent, representative and one who comes after someone. who follows someone. There are many kinds of khulafa mentioned in the Holy Quran. Generally, we observe that there are two types of khulafa about which that we can say that they are kind. They are khulafa that one of them is, one of, the, one of, one of those is called khalifatullah. That is the khulafa of Allah, they are the prophets and messengers of Allah Almighty and the second type is are the khulafa of prophets, khulafa of the messengers. They are, after they come, after the, or they are appointed by Allah Almighty after the demise of a prophet. They are appointed by Allah after the demise of a prophet. A few submissions that I have to make today are of another kind of khilafat. It is the way of Allah Almighty since time memorial that whenever misguidance spreads on the earth, he sends his prophets in order to guide people and reform people and so, so that they may call people unto Allah Almighty. and so that they may be able to establish a strong relationship with Allah. Once a community has been formed and established, and uh, in the, uh, as, as Allah Dhrimati has said in the verse 56 of Surah Nur, that once a jamaat, a community has been established, you believe in Allah and they do good works. When such a community has been established, and the mission um, given to the Prophet has been fulfilled, then Allah Almighty causes them to die. However, in order to keep their message alive and their community alive, Allah Almighty establishes Khilafat. Ma kanat nabuwatun kattu illa tabit khilafatun. This is a saying of the Holy Prophet ﷺ mentioned and recorded in Kanzul Umal. In this, the Holy Prophet ﷺ said that there has never been a Prophet which was not followed by a uh, Khilafat. Such a khilafat which comes after a prophet and those khilafa follow in the footsteps of the previous of the prophet. In this regard, the Holy Prophet has also given us this glad tiding and there is a hadith. This is a hadith, hadith, Hazrat Huzafa radiya Allah ta'ala writes that the Holy Prophet sallallahu said that Nabuot prophethood shall remain among you until Allah wishes and desires and then it will be taken away. Then there will be khilafatun ala minhaj nabuwa. And then there will be khilafat on the precepts of prophethood. And then it will also be taken away. Then then there will be a dictatorship. 
and it will remain as long as Allah desires and then it will be taken away. Then the Holy Prophet وسلم, said that there shall be then be monarchical despotism which shall remain as long as Allah wills and come to an end upon his decree. They will then emerge Khilafat on the precepts of prophethood, that is Allah min haji and nubuwa. And after that, the Holy Prophet وسلم, became silent. In other words, the Holy Prophet وسلم, told us that once that, that Khilafat, Allah min haji and nubuwa, the Khilafat on the precepts of prophethood has been established, that Khilafat shall remain forever and there will be nothing else. So, in accordance, in the exact accordance with the prophecy of the Holy Prophet وسلم, the promised Messiah and Mahdi appeared, who was referred to by the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as a prophet in Nabi Allah. The promised Messiah وسلم, after having been informed by Allah the Almighty repeatedly that he, the time of his demise was near and close, he penned a book uh, titled Al Wasiyat. In that book, the Promised Messiah Islam wrote that Allah, it is the way of Allah the Almighty that He uh, shows two manifestations. And the Promised the Promised Messiah Islam says, since it is the Sunnah from time immemorial that God Almighty shows two manifestations so that the two false joys of the opponents be put to an end. And it is, it is not possible now that so that two false joys of the opponents be put to an end. It is not possible now that God should relinquish his sunnah of old. So do not grieve over what I have said to you. No, that is about his demise. No, should your hearts be distressed. For it is essential for you to witness the second manifestation also. And its coming is better for you because it is everlasting, the continuity of which will not end till the Day of Judgment. And that second manifestation cannot come unless I depart. But, I, but when I depart, God will send that second manifestation for you, will you, for you which shall always stay with you, just as promised by Allah the Almighty, by God. In, Bra in Brahim Ahmadiyya. And this promise is not for my person, rather the promise is with reference to you as God addressing me says, I shall make this Jamaat who are your followers prevail over others to the Day of Judgment. Thus it is inevitable that you see that day of my departure. So people who think that uh, Pe because people cast votes, it is though it, they who choose the Khalifa. It is not correct, as Allah the Almighty has said in Surah Nur, that af upon the demise of a prophet, Allah shall continue to appoint Khulafa after the demise of prophets. Allah the Almighty says, La yastakhlifannahum, that I shall most certainly myself appoint the Khulafa. In other words, it is a promise of Allah Almighty that he shall appoint the Khulafa. Although, in the apparent sense, people will be that and they will cast their votes, but it will be Allah the Almighty who will choose and appoint the Khalifa. 
It is Allah the Almighty who puts uh, in the hearts of the people and gives them the indication as to which person to choose. Same was the tr same was true in case of Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Khamis Sayyidullah Taala bin Aziz that people who had never even seen or heard of him. They were shown visions and dreams that there is a person, there is a man of God whose name is Mirza Masroor Ahmed and that he shall be chosen, he shall be his, uh, be given the vote. I am a witness to this that when the proceedings of the elections were going on, Hazur was sitting right at the end in the mosque. However, Allah Almighty brought him to the fore and this is a testament, this is a proof that Allah Almighty chooses the Khalifa. And the person who is chosen, he is then aided by Allah's support and help. And this has always been ca the case with the Prophets and Khulafa. Huzur bin Aziz, right from the beginning, was a very quiet person. He did not desire to come to the fore, to the people and do, deliver speeches. In Rabwa, I remember that sometimes I would um, accompany Huzur um, after namaz to his house and we would walk to his house very quietly. We, I would say salam and then I would depart as well. He was very quiet. He did not desire to be shown. He did not desire to, to deliver speeches. He, however, Allah Almighty aided and helped him in such magnificent ways that now we listen to Huzur's addresses, his, uh, his speeches, his sermons, and we are astonished that how magnificent points and uh, insightful points Hazur delivers every day when Hazur went to a certain country the protocol that was given to Hazur uh, before it was such that was given last time to the president of that country was it not due to the help of Allah the Almighty and assistance of Allah the Almighty that it is Allah the Almighty who once chooses the Khalifa, he aids and helps his man. Hazur once prayed to Allah the Almighty that, Oh Allah, you have told your uh, Messiah that Nusir to be ro'ad. As you said that I prayed to Allah the Almighty that O oh Allah help me as well with, that is you, you told the promised Messiah that Nusir to Barok that this Messiah will be helped with prestige O oh Allah help me as well this is how Hazur prayed when Hazur went to the Capitol Hill to speak and address the parliamentarians and Hazur met many people there and uh, the, among, the, among them was a woman and she said that I was uh, very busy and I will only meet you for a few moments and when she came and uh, she met Hazur and she was compelled to say after meeting Hazur compelled to stay after meeting Hazur and to listen to the uh, sermon and address of Hazur in its entirety so she so the, there was, and she insisted that the, she be set in front of Hazur and listen to the entire address of Hazur. Was it not due to Allah's assistance and aid? Does it not prove that Allah Almighty his hand and his support and succor and help is with the Khalifa? Then there are many, uh, you've just heard, the, listen to the speech of Hamza Sahib, he conveyed and uh, narrated his own incident and how Allah Almighty listened to the prayers of Fazur and he solved his, uh, Hamza Sahib's uh, difficulties. And there are hundreds of such, uh, such examples. Many among you who are listening and watching and sat here, uh, will have uh, would be witnesses to this that you had some difficulty and you wrote to Zur for prayers and Allah Almighty blessed you 
and remove those difficulties. Allah Dilmati helps his Khalifa and the community, we witness this every day, is progressing leaps and bounds every day. Through Hazrat Khalifa blessed us with MTA through which the message of Islam Ahmadiyyat is spreading across the globe. The voice which uh, people wanted to stop and arrest has been spreading to the corners of the earth through MTA. And this was in, indeed the promise of Allah Almighty to the promise of Salah Islam that I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. Now, instead of one MTA channels, we have eight MTA channels that, that are broadcasting the message of Islam Ahmadiyyat throughout the globe 24-7. Uh, is it not due to the assistance and help of Allah the Almighty that is with the Khalifa? And does this not prove that it is Allah the Almighty who chooses and ele elects and appoints the Khalifa? We should remember that in order to avail of this blessing of Khalifa, to Allah says in the next verse of Surah Nur that we must observe Salat, we must pay Zakat, and we must obey the Messenger, and it is then that we will show mercy. This was the example of the companions of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, Hazrat Usman, Hazrat Ali Radhiallahu During the time when Muslims uh, showed slackness in this, the Muslims then gradually lost their prestige. Hence, as we've gathered here, congregated in this mosque for Yom e Khilafat and Khilafat Day, we should reflect whether the purpose of this gathering is only to come here and listen to speeches and go home. No. Rather, the purpose is that we should uh, promise to Allah Almighty that we, that we, should, we should obey the Khalifa unconditionally and we should continue and strive to gain his nearness. And how can we do this? For example, whenever we are able to meet Huzur, we should go and avail of this opportunity. Or if that is not possible, we should write to the Khalifa of the time for prayers. This also increases one's uh, affinity, one's um, closeness with Huzur. We should also watch MTA programs and especially those where Huzur appears. The key to our success lies in the, our attachment to Khilafat. Hazrat Sir Chaudhary Muhammad Rafullah Khan Sahib Radila Talanho gained success in spiritual terms as well as um, in worldly terms. And when someone asked uh, Chaudhary Sahib what the sec secret of success was, his succinct and prompt answer was that it is only and only due to the blessings of Khilafat that have gained the success. In 2003, Hazur Aydullah Talab bin in his special message to the Jamaat said that if you wish to progress and be victorious in the world, it is my message to you that you should be attached to Khilafat and this rope of Allah Almighty. The secret of all our success lies in the attachment to Khilafat. May Allah be with you. May Allah enable you to be attached to Khilafat uh, firmly. Allah bless you uh, <coughs> for that excellent uh, address. Now I would like to request some member Sahib to come and recite a poem please. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Kalam M. A. Kahir Sahib. Khilafat ke bina apna nahi kuch bhi guzara hai. Yehi zulmat 
बहरोब में एक अपना सहारा है खिलाफत के बिना अपना नहीं कुछ भी गुजारा है यही जुलमात बहरोब में एक अपना सहारा है कोई ऐसा भी है जो दूसरों के दर्द में जागे कोई ऐसा भी है जो दूसरों के दर्द में जागे यकीन एक बंदा है खलीफा वो हमारा है यकीन एक बंदा है खलीफा वो हमारा है खिलाफत के बिना अपना नहीं कुछ भी गुजारा है यही जुलमात बहरोब में एक अपना सहारा है चले वो दश्त सहरा में तो उनमें फूल खिल उठे चले वो दश्त सहरा में तो उनमें फूल खिल उठे वही है जिसे हर बिगड़ी हुई शै को सवारा है वही है जिसे ने हर बिगड़ी हुई शै को सवारा है खिलाफत के बिना अपना नहीं कुछ भी गुजारा है यही जुलमात बहरोब में एक अपना सहारा है बचाओ जंग से सबको यही पैगाम उसका है बचाओ जंग से सबको यही पैगाम उसका है इसी में फायदा सबका है वरना सब खसारा है इसी में फायदा सबका है वरना सब खसारा है खिलाफत के बिना अपना नहीं कुछ भी गुजारा है यही जुलमात बहरोब में एक अपना सहारा है बरा रास्त उसका है तालुक अर्श वाले से बरा रास्त उसका है तालुक अर्श वाले से जो उसकी मर्जी होती है 
وہی اس کا اشارہ ہے خلافت کے بنا اپنا نہیں کچھ بھی گزارا ہے یہی ظلمات بحر و بر میں ایک اپنا سہارا ہے ہے اس رخ پر فدا کا ہے وہ جس کا نور ربانی ہے اس رخ پر فدا کا ہے وہ جس کا نور ربانی خدا کو دیکھنا چاہو تو اس کا یہ نظارہ ہے خدا کو دیکھنا چاہو تو اس کا یہ نظارہ ہے خلافت کے بنا اپنا نہیں کچھ بھی گزارا ہے یہی ظلمات بحر و بر میں ایک اپنا سہارا ہے میں ایک اپنا سہارا ہے اشہد ان لا الہ الا اللہ وحده لا شریک لہو و اشہد ان محمد عبده و رسوله اما بعد فعوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم My respected colleagues respected speakers and all the participants of this Special Khilafat Jalsa Salana Assalamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullahi Wa Barakatuh It is indeed a very special day and this is a day that we need to continue to remind ourselves why we celebrate this day what is the importance of the celebration of this Khilafat Day Firstly, I'd like to say that by the grace of Allah, after a period of long absence and COVID, we, alhamdulillah, although we still have to observe the SOPs, are now able to get together and hold such a jalsa. And in particular, I am so pleased that the younger generations, especially some of our children, are also here to attend this Jalsa. And that is the true spirit of Jalsa, that at these Jalsas we keep reminding ourselves what is the importance of Khilafat. And today you heard some very scholarly speeches regarding this particular topic. And inshallah, I remember when we were very young, my father used to say, come and sit down and listen, and you may not be able to understand everything that you hear, but you will be able to understand the essence of what has been discussed. And today I say to all these young children who are sitting here today, I'm sure that when you go home to today, your mothers and fathers will ask you, so what did you learn today from this Jalsa? And I can say with a lot of confidence that inshallah you will be able to tell them what 
the essence of today's Jalsa was. Also remember that when we hold such majalis, Allah Ta'ala sends his angels on such majalises. And there is a great blessing of everyone who participates in such majalises. So today's majalis, by the grace of Allah, has this special significance that after a long period of COVID, we have been able to get together again in larger numbers. And inshallah, by the grace of Allah, this process will, inshallah, hopefully now continue and go from strength to strength in the future. So, as I mentioned today, we are celebrating here Khilafat Day. Firstly, it is very important to explain what is Khilafat. The word Khilafat means succession. You've already heard that from earlier speakers. And the Khalifa is a successor to a Prophet of Allah whose goal is to carry the completion, carry to completion the task of reformation and moral training that has been seeded by the Prophet. The community of followers of the Prophet of Allah continues to nurture his faith and practice under the blessing of the institution of Khilafat as long as Allah wills. The definition of Khilafat is also explained in the Holy Quran by Allah the Almighty. And Allah states, Allah has promised to those amongst you who believe and act righteously that he will surely make them successor Khalifas in the earth, as he has made successors from amongst those who were before them. And he will surely establish for them their religion which he has chosen for them, and that he will surely grant them security and peace in place of fear. In this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah has promised Khilafah to the Muslims with a condition of faith and good actions. The Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had foretold that Allah will reestablish the institution of Khilafat in the latter days. We see many wrong notions about Khilafat being preached today by some Muslim scholars. Some even say that there is no need for Khilafat now and that all the Muslims should try and act upon Islamic teachings according to his or her understanding. There's a well-known hadith that the Holy Prophet وسلم, is reported to have observed the prophethood shall remain amongst you as long as Allah wills. Then Khilafat on the pre and the pattern of prophethood will commence and remain as long as he wills. A corrupt monarchy shall then follow and it shall remain as long as Allah wills. There shall then be a trinical despotism which shall remain as long as Allah wills. And then once again, Khilafat will emerge on the precept of prophethood. So you can see that it was predicted, and although the other Muslims at this moment in time do not accept the coming of the Messiah and the, prophet, uh, and the Khilafat which followed the coming of the Messiah, but this was predicted by the Holy Prophet And at this moment in time, the whole of the Muslim Ummah is looking for leadership, looking for Khilafat. But they are caught in a trap where they themselves cannot create a single Khilafat, a righteous Khilafat. And at the same time, they are not prepared to accept the second coming of the Messiah. That was predicted by the Holy Prophet Muhammad And now we are finding that all the signs that were foretold of the coming of the Messiah 
have been completed and they still refuse to accept that a Messiah has come. So what is happening is that the Muslim Ummah now is saying is that there is no need for a Messiah to come. And it's almost as if they have sidelined the second coming of the Messiah. And hence, they do not accept that there will be a Khilafat that was predicted by the Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu the revival of the Khilafat. Now we, as a Jamaat, are very blessed with this institution. And we must never underestimate the blessing that Allah has given us. Now, Hazrat Mizah Ghulam Ahmed, the Promised Prophet Islam, likened Khilafah to the second manifestations of God's power, the advent of the Prophet being the first manifestation. He drew parallel and offered the exemplary Khilafah of Hazrat Abu Bakr as the second manifest manifestations. His main objective was to revive the true teachings of Islam and he said, the mission for which I have been appointed is to remove the growing gap in the relationship between God and his creation and replace it once again with the relationship of love and sincerity and by allowing the truth to manifest itself and cause religious wars and discord to end and thus lay the foundation of peace. So you can see that the main objective of the coming of the promised Messiah was bring everyone together and to create peace in this world. Now this work then of course has to be undertaken by the Khulafas. And we have seen in the very short history of Ahmadiyyat by the grace of Allah how from a very small, unknown place called Qadian, Allah the Almighty, through Khilafat, has taken the Jamaat from its small and humble beginnings to 210 countries of the world. And Allah has, through the Khilafat, created such huge change in this world. Now, divine, the Allah has his own way of working and sometimes we don't understand it. First, Allah moved Khilafat out of Qadian into Pakistan. And that was under divine edict as well. There, by the grace of Allah, the Jamaat flourished and as we know that the Jamaat grew very quickly in Pakistan as well. But then there's the Jamaat became stronger and you know that in the Hazrat Khaliftam Sisani had a strong part in the creation of Pakistan. And he was also, at that stage, highly respected and was appointed as the first chair of the Kashmir Committee. And at that stage, Ahmadis throughout Pakistan were known for their honesty and integrity. And any officer who was honest and had integrity, whether he was or he wasn't, people automatically assumed that he was an Ahmadi. Allah blessed us, Ahmadis became generals, air commodores, judges, and held high office in every aspect of Pakistani life. And then came a time when Allah the Almighty felt it was necessary for the progress of the Jamaat, for Khilafat to migrate again. 
And the only way that Khilafat was going to migrate was when it became impossible for Khalif al-Masih to practice his faith in Pakistan. And at that stage, when we were declared as non-Muslims, it was a very traumatic period for the Jamaat. But Allah has his own divine way. When Khalif al-Masih moved out of Pakistan, it brought such huge, great change for the Jamaat that by the grace of Allah, in a very short period, now the Jamaat has spread throughout the world. At that stage, the aspirations of the Jamaat were that maybe someday we will have a small radio station. And I remember when Khalifa Tumsi Salis Rambula came and he mentioned his wish in this respect, we thought that perhaps somewhere in Ghana we will probably have a radio station. But Allah had his own plans. Through the institu institution of Khilafat, Allah had planned that the Jamaat will grow very quickly and that, uh, that the Jamaat will have great influence throughout the world. And even the fact that we were separated out by the Pakistani government eventually has played in our favor because now in the Western world, the Western leaders are saying, this is the Islam we want and not the rest. And they're grouping everybody else together. And they're saying, this Khilafat is the true way forward. And we've seen that in a very short period of time, when Khilafat moved to London, I have mentioned it many times, at that stage nobody knew about the Jamaat. In fact, I'm, I'm repeating myself, but when Hazrat Khalif Tumasi Rabi Ramullah came to this country, and we held a religious Founders Day function in Whitelands College and invited a number of religious leaders. We also invited the mayor of Wandsworth. And when the mayor said, yes, we thought we had conquered the world, the mayor was coming to our function. Well, last night here in Beth al we had a function to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee that was organized by Ansarullah. And there were so many mayors that we did not have any room to put them on the front table and even parliamentarians had to sit on the floor. And we've seen now that from those humble beginnings when a mayor held a big an important role by the grace of Allah, world leaders come to seek guidance from Khalif al -Masih. At peace conferences, you have seen how there is a line of parliamentarians and ministers and other people from various walks of life, ambassadors and things, who all come for the one purpose that they want to listen to Khalif al masih and seek his blessings. And I know a number of politicians who have directly said to me, we would like to seek Azul's advice on this matter and that matter. So, we can see that the blessings of Khilafat on our Jamaat within a very short period in our own eyes. When Khilafat came to this country, and I again repeat myself, the first Jalsa that was held was held in the Mahmood Hall in London Mosque. And there were, Mahmood Hall could only accommodate, accommodate three, four hundred people. 
And on the final day when we held the Jalsa, it was in Serbatan Recreational Center where we had 1,500 men and 1,500 women. And then the following year, Azul realized that the Jamaat was growing, the needs were growing, so instructed the Jamaat to acquire land where we could hold our Jalsas. And when we acquired Islamabad, I remember we were saying 25 acres, such a huge site. What will we do with 25 acres? Little did we know that Allah had his own plans. That one day we will have 210 acres and that will be too small for the Jamaat. Already as most of you are aware that at Jalsas, that 210 acres is not large enough for the Jamaat. We have to get other facilities for parking and other, other reasons off-site so that we can hold our jalsas. Then we have seen that from the aspiration to have one small radio station, Allah had his own plans. He said, your aspirations are too low. I have plans where we will have television stations. And this was a time when this technology was very new. And one of the first Muslim television station that was created in the West was MTA. And then through the blessings of Khilafat, we have seen that are under the current Khilafat by the grace of Allah, how that has progressed and grown into such a mature organ of the Jamaat that it is now translating in several languages to people all around the world. And a lot of people are accepting Ahmadiyyat through this process. Then the publication of the Holy Quran in different languages. Again, we have seen that throughout the process, by the grace of Allah, it has, this work has continued to grow and now by the grace of Allah, the Holy Quran is published in over 70 languages. And this is a work that can only be achieved under the institution of Khilafat. Now, Hazuri Anwar, Ayyad Talab and Aziz, through the various peace conferencing that we've held in this very complex, has been warning world leaders that unless they bring about change, there is international conflict can take place. And I remember sitting next to various politicians over the many years, and they always felt that Azul was being a bit alarmist, and that there was no possibility that such a th thing could happen. Those very politicians today are now looking and reflecting on Hazur's words and they must be thinking, how is it possible that this person who is not even a politician could have predicted such a thing? Now Hazur is acknowledged as a man of peace all around the world. He has been to various bodies and institutions and parliaments around the world. And he has delivered the message of peace to people all around the world. And that message of peace is the very thing that will bring change in this world. Because world leaders will now start to recognize that unless they bring change now, it may become too late. 
because Hazur has mentioned quite graphically the consequences of a nuclear war and what death and destruction that can cause. And this recent conflict in Ukraine, you now see both West and Eastern leaders actually are talking about the possibility of nuclear conflict. And therefore, change must take place. But it will be only Khalifat al-Masih, who is the representative of Allah the Almighty on this earth, through his prayers and through his guidance, the world can still come back to his creator. Because one of the things that has happened is that the more affluent the society has become, the more we have moved away from Allah the Almighty. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as I read earlier, he said that the main reason for his coming was to bridge the gap between man and his creator. And we, the Ahdi Muslims, should be the leaders in bridging that gap. And the way we're going to bridge that gap is if we become model of the Muslims, then our supplications to Allah will truly have true meaning. Now sometimes I worry that we too are caught up in this rat race where the rest of the world is engaged. Remember that the risk has already been defined by Allah the Almighty of what he's going to receive. You can either receive it honestly or you can receive it dishonestly. Now here I'd like to just share a small story with you of Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhu. One day he was traveling uh, and on his journey it was time for prayers. So he came to a place of worship and he gave his horse to somebody and said to him, will you please look after my horse while I go and offer my prayers? And when Hazrat Ali came back, having offered his prayers, he found that the person had gone and his horse was standing there without a saddle. So he realized that the man had taken the saddle and most likely sold it at the shop where they trade on saddles. So he went to the shop, said to the shopkeeper, has somebody sold you a saddle recently? He said yes. So he paid him 40 dirhams and bought his saddle back. And as he was riding out of the town, he saw that man. And he said to the man, I'm not going to be angry with you. Allah the Almighty had already decreed that you were going to receive 40 dirhams today. It was up to you because I had already made up my mind that when I came out from the mosque that I was going to give you 40 dirhams for looking after my horse. But you chose to obtain those 40 dirhams dishonestly. And you will have to be answerable for, for what you've done today. So I say to all our members of the Jamaat, Allah has already decreed what we're going to receive in terms of income. Work hard, work honestly, 
work diligently and you will receive it. But if you enter into dishonesty and receive it in a dishonest manner, then remember that your future generations will suffer as a result of your dishonesty. And we must not allow that to happen. Also remember that whatever you do today, your children will do that in the future. There's another small story that I'll relate to you. There was an old man when his wife died, he used to be a very angry and a person, critical person. So his son took him in and he continued criticizing everything. And his daughter-in-law put up with it for some time. And then eventually she started complaining that her father-in-law, his behavior was unacceptable. He was critical, he was always angry always dishonest in his dealings. And she started complaining to her husband that this is not acceptable behavior. So one day the wife got so upset that she said, okay, you have to make a decision today. It's either him or me. And make your choice. So the man decided that he wanted to retain his family, so he took his father on his back, because his father was disabled as well, and took him to the river. And the idea was that he was going to throw him in the river. And when he went to a particular spot and was about to throw him, the father stopped him and said, son, please don't throw me at this spot. Go further down the river and you can throw me there. And he said, why? Why do you not want me to throw? He said, because at this very spot, I threw your grandfather into the river. So what you sow, you're going to reap one day. And what we teach our children through our conduct today, we will reap that as we grow older. So let's be very vigilant that we have the blessings of Khilafat amongst us. Allah has truly blessed our Jamaat. Zuri Anwar always is telling us to make our relationship with Allah the Almighty, to lead an honest life with integrity, to be pious, to excel ourselves in good deeds. So as a Jamaat, we must make sure that we say Lubay to the words of our Khalifa so that we can build Allah's blessings and pleasures by acting upon the advice given to us. May Allah enable us to achieve this objective and may Allah bless our future generations who are going to be the true soldiers of Ahmadiyyat in the future. A lot of them are Vakfino. A lot of parents have made this supreme sacrifice. Bring them up in a healthy, open manner. Don't put negativity into them. Put in the love of Allah, not the fear of Allah into them. Because when you put the love of something, it has a different meaning and different connotations than if you put fear into children. These are amanats that Allah has given to you. Don't fail them. Because if you fail them, you'll be failing yourself and your family and the future generations to come. And once you destroy one person, all of the generations that come out of that one person will also be destroyed. Remember that. So generate generosity, love, 
compassion in the children so that they are forgiving, not carry hate with them all the time. Hate is something and ego is something that destroys the inner soul. If you have those two ingredients in you, you can never develop a relationship with Allah the Almighty. You must learn to forgive first and then you will win Allah's pleasure. Finally, I would say that uh, Allah has truly blessed us with the institution of Khilafat. We therefore must, in our daily prayers, pray for the good health and long life of Hazrat Amir Mumineen and his family. That may Allah continue to bless us through this great institution. At the end, I will just take a couple of minutes to just mention two or three things. One, the most important thing for us is to connect the children with the mosque. That is the best form of tarbiyat we can do, is to bring them here, and that's why I'm very, always very pleased when I see lots of children here. Secondly, the moral education is very important and I've instructed all of the Jamaats to start restart Sunday schools after a long period where we did not have. So please make sure that in your Jamaats we restart Sunday school for the education of our spiritual education of our children. We also, by the grace of Allah, during this COVID period under direction from Hazur Enver started the Itka Academy, the Lima Quran Academy, where now by the grace of Allah some 3,000 children and elders are benefiting, some on one-to-one -one basis for the learning of the Holy Quran and its translation. So those parents who have small children who are not aware of this, they should immediately go online and register their children because they will get the very best teachers to teach them the education. Then we have for the ladies have started the Aisha Academy by the grace of Allah. It is coming to the completion of the first year of the Academy. And inshallah, we are hopeful that in the coming years, more and more young ladies will be able to join this Academy and benefit from it. We are also trying to see if we can take it online so that girls from around the country can also benefit from this academy. Hazur Anwar also said to us that young children have lots of questions in their minds, so he asked us to start small videos which answered some of the questions that children have in their minds. So we did a survey around the country and came out with a list of questions that people unanimously sent to us and through the answers that the Khulafa have given and answers from our scholars, small videos have been prepared. And we have almost 700 videos now on this website called Islam Unraveled. And I would certainly say to the parents that they should encourage their children to go and make use of this website because they will find it very useful. Then we have, with again the direction of Hazrat Amir Mumineen, the voice of Islam. Now I would say to all the youngsters who are not already listening to it, please listen to it because you will find it is dealing with contemporary issues in a very beautiful and Islamic way. And you will learn about history, philosophy, medical science. All of these sciences are being transmitted through this very important radio. I had set a standard of Radio 4 for those of you who listen or have listened to Radio 4, which is the best channel that BBC offers. And that was the standard we wanted to set. And by the grace of Allah, that standard is being set in, in a lot of um, areas. Then, 
as I mentioned, that we are also starting now an online academy for the religious education of our children, just like Itka, under direction from Hazur Anwar. Inshallah, the Noor Academy, Hazur has named it Noor, Noor Academy. Uh, registrations are taking place between ages of now. Online registrations have started. So those parents who have children between the age of seven and 18 who are interested, they should register their children immediately because I think you will find that this is going to be another very important uh, source of education, religious education for your children. We are also providing academic education for those of children who need it. And if parents have children who need assistance, they should contact our secretary, Talim, inshallah, he will be able to assist you. There are various courses being run for people who need employment, our Secretary Tanaj Salatul Tajarat has been organizing various courses so they can very easily apply through him uh, to the various courses that are being run. And finally, by the grace of Allah, the Battle II reconstruction program is moving forward speedily. Uh, I'm sure that those of you who come here regularly uh, are able to see it, you, they can, I think, show you a small presentation here where you can see, by the grace of Allah, the main building structure is now complete. And now uh, the internal work is being undertaken. Uh, the structure will have two main halls, Nasser Hall and Noor Hall. Um, as you can see that the architecture is going to be very contemporary and beautiful with the Islamic touch to it. And the uh, stone that been used is come from a special quarry in Portugal. This is the Nur Hall, uh, Nasser Hall that you're seeing here. Inshallah, uh, once it's complete, it will be a beautiful hall with high ceilings. These are mezzanine floors where we're going to have exhibitions and things like that uh, will take place here. Um, then this is uh, Noor Hall upstairs. Uh, inshallah, lots of programs will take place in the Noor Hall as well. And here we have some office accommodation that is adjacent to the Noor Hall. Uh, this is now the third floor where we have Jamaat offices. And the, the third floor, sorry, accommodation. There, there you can see some of the, uh, the, uh, the, the rooms being fitted out for accommodation. We have guests from around the world because Khilafat is here amongst us. So from people from around the world come here and we should, as a UK Jamaat, should take good cares of the guests of the Promised Islam. So the third and the fourth floor, inshallah, will be good places of accommodation for our guests. So finally, once again, special prayers that may Allah bless Hazur Anwar and his family so that we may continue to receive Allah's blessing through this great institution. Will you join me in silent prayer, please? Ameen. And now I think we should prepare for Maghrib and Nishan. We prayers. have seen God's divine promise Oh yes, to sorry, this I forgot to mention that we are also preparing some videos on Khilafat, a series of videos, and I think there is a promotional video that they wanted to play. So please listen to it and then we'll prepare for Maghrib and Nishan Namaz.
We have seen God's divine promise to this Jamaat fulfilled with the transformation of fear into peace and security as the mantle of Khilafat is passed on. Uh, when I related my dream to someone, he informed me that you have seen the election of the Sheikh Khalifa to show that the Khalifa is chosen by God Almighty himself. That tour of Europe for me was, was a real eye-opener. Zul managed to deliver 16 speeches, visit four different countries, open a number of different mosques. Hazul's doing all this for us. And the fact that Hazul was asking for feedback about the Ishtama directly from someone uh, that was just in his office just goes again to show the love and affection that Hazul shows. Just as a father cares for his, his children, Hazul truly cares for us. Um, and, uh, you know, at times of happiness, he also shares our joy and happiness as well. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Community UK will be hosting a series of live events on the blessings of Khilafat. Send us videos of your experiences of the blessings of Khilafat via WhatsApp or Telegram. Tune in to the live series on the Ahmadiyya UK YouTube channel. Zakhalad, that brings us to the end of this uh, Khilafat Day presentation. After Namaz, there will be some refreshments in Tahir Hall. And ladies? Uh, outside the mosque. Ladies outside the mosque. Okay, Zakhalad. Can we offer uh, azan, please? <laughs>